So after a stretch of bad weather, we've finally got a full night of clear skies here in Sirencester. So join me while I shoot the Tadpole Nebula. Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to be in the garden photographing the Tadpole Nebula. And as you can see behind me, I'm all set up and I have the big Skywatcher 190 reflector set up. So I haven't used this telescope for some time now since buying the William Optics Z73. That scope's kind of been my go-to. It's really convenient to set up. It's really light, it's really easy, um, and it gave me quite a nice wide field view. So I've been going for some of the wider field targets. But now I'm photographing the Tadpole Nebula that a thousand millimeter focal length, that extra reach really helps to frame the target. So I'm going to give it a go again tonight. And hopefully I can get a decent image. It's supposed to be clear all night long. It's actually quite cloudy at the moment and there's a little bit of snow in the air, but it is meant to be clear and cold all night long. So I'm hoping I might be able to finish, finish the target tonight if all goes to plan. Um, but I will bring you back out when it's, uh, when it's dark and I'll show you how I'm going on. Okay, so I've had a bit of a nightmare tonight and I just can't seem to get anything working at all. So just before I was about to do my polar alignment, the ASI Air app decided to do a firmware update and since then everything's just gone completely wrong. So I went through the polar alignment okay and then it came to trying to focus and the EAF just completely malfunctioned. So I tried to go through the, the automatic focus routine that I usually do so I get pretty much or as close to focus like as I can and then press the autofocus function and that just wouldn't acquire focus at all so I then tried to do it manually by pressing the up and down buttons on the uh, on the app and the every time I pressed up the uh, the EAF just kept on spinning and just uh, the, the, just kept on moving the focuser and I couldn't stop it. So I actually had to take the, the focuser off the telescope. So I had to bring the scope back inside, um, unscrew the focuser and um, then reset the, uh, the telescope up, which was a bit of a nightmare. Um, and then I had to obviously focus manually using a Batonov mask. So that was quite interesting because I haven't done that for quite some time. So it's a little bit of fun anyway. Um, then I came to um, trying to collect some some images, and the 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 guiding was just all over the place. Really, it was just so sort of sporadic. Um, it would it would seem like it was absolutely fine for for a few minutes or so, and then I'd just have a huge spike out of nowhere, um, and none of my images were coming out with with round stars. So I don't usually get hung up on the the guiding data. Um, Usually, if, if, if I get round stars, I don't care what the numbers say, but um, it, it seemed like just every now and again there was just a big spike and it just left left me with um, horrible images really. Um, I thought it might be the it might be wind, so I thought there might just be like really large gusts of winds, especially with the large telescope outside. But it's not really windy, um, and I tried some shorter exposures as well, and I was still getting the same issue. So I'll show you the issue, the problem that I had. So this was these are the type of images that I was getting, and I'll put these up on screen now so you can see them. But if you actually zoom into the stars, this is what the stars were looking like. So I had sort of round stars and then lines either side off off the stars so um i'm still not collecting images it's uh it's getting quite late now i'm, I'm half tempted to give up and just try another night but i know it's still going to be clear all night long according to all the forecasts so i'm going to give it another go go back outside see if i can uh, get set up and finally start collecting some images so yeah fingers crossed hopefully i can get something done but um it might might be out of luck tonight 
Okay, so after quite a lot of hard work tonight, I finally got the scope taking uh, images on the Tadpole Nebula. But it's just one of those nights that everything seems to have gone wrong. But it had to be on the uh, the first full clear night of 2021. But anyway, um, I finally got it up. It's about 10.30 now and I'm, I'm starting to collect some HA images on the Tadpole. Um, hopefully I can get a few hours of usable data. But I think it was probably due to the... Uh, the firmware update that I mentioned earlier but nothing seemed to work so the uh, the automatic focuser didn't work um, guiding's just been all over the place tonight and I just haven't had an, any luck at all um, but anyway yeah gonna go to bed now leave it collecting some oxygen data because there's no moon tonight and uh, hopefully I can finish off the target and the, uh, on another night So I've just come out to check on the mount because there was get some dodgy tracking going on. And I realised that it hasn't done the uh, the meridian flip. So as you can see, it's very close to running into the the pier. And that's the issue with this big scope. It can knock into the tripod if uh, if you're not careful. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't do the. The automatic meridian flip it's usually really good um, I just assumed it had as it was carrying on taking images but I need to make sure I do that now so I'll show you how it works okay so I've just moved the mount back to the home position before I actually banged into the tripod legs um, so now I'm just gonna go back to the target and you'll see it'll flip the other way meaning they won't bang into the tripod leg anymore and it should have much more clearance so, anyway it's just recentering itself now should find the target and then if you see here don't know if you can see that uncentering so it's going to retry again and then it's target is centered and then hopefully so that's the final exposure I did, um, but hopefully that, that means that the uh, the tadpole nebula is now centred and there is a lot more clearance, as you can see, a lot more clearance there um, to track the object all night. Obviously a bit chilly overnight, got a lot of frost on the telescope, hopefully it's all okay. Okay, so it is a few nights later, we have another clear night in Sirencester and all of the issues I had following that firmware update seem to have sorted themselves out, which is excellent. The EAF um, acquired focus, no problem. The guiding is back to normal, so hopefully I should get quite a lot of data tonight. Now I managed to get a little bit of usable oxygen data, so tonight I'm going to try and get the HA and the S2 and finish off the image. It's still quite close to a new moon, so I am pushing the exposure times a little bit. I'm trying to go for 10 minute subs. If it was closer to a sort of 50, 60, 70% moon, I usually try and keep the exposure times a little bit shorter due to the added light from, from the moon. But um, because we're close to a new moon, I'm going to try and push it a little bit. So hopefully I should get a good ratio of signal to noise. I've got the camera set at unity gain and I have the camera cooled to minus 20 degrees. So fingers crossed, I don't have any more issues. I will double check the Meridian flip, make sure that that works. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on the uh, the image at the end of the video. Thank you very much for getting this far. If you're still watching, um, please do hit that like button. It does really help. And I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.